Electrolysis solutions. Um, this is a, this is a hard one to get your head around. Um, this is the fifth video in the electrolysis line. So if you if you are not up on the first four, then I strongly suggest you you have a look at those first. Um, last video we looked at the electrolysis of sodium chloride solutions. So this was an introduction. The last video uh, it was an introduction to the electrolysis uh, of solutions. Just to recap on that before we go on to the the other uh, compounds that are in the specification. Uh, if we do the electrolysis of sodium chloride aqueous, this is different to the electrolysis of sodium chloride liquid. Uh, when we do electrolysis of sodium chloride liquid, uh, molten sodium chloride, there's only two ions present, sodium and chlorine. When we do the electrolysis of solution, and this is the really key important bit, when we do the electrolysis of a solution, there are hydrogen ions present and hydroxide ions present as well because the AQ is aqueous, that's water. Uh, and water uh, will split itself into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So when we do the electrolysis of a solution, you have got four ions present. Uh, sodium, uh, in, in the case of sodium chloride aqueous, you've got sodium ions, uh, chloride ions, the sodium and the chloride, and then the hydroxide and the hydrogen ions, that's the water. The H2O there splits into hydroxide and hydrogen ions. Now, the fundamental principle here is only one ion is produced at the anode and the cathode. Okay, only one ion is produced at the anode and the cathode. So the cathode is a negative electrode, the sodium ions head off to the cathode, so do the hydrogen ions, they head off to the cathode, but only one can be produced. So the rule is, uh, it's about reactivity series, it's around reactivity. This is the rule, and it needs learning. Hydrogen is here, uh, towards the bottom of the reactivity series, and that's always present in solutions because the hydrogen ion comes from the water. If the other ion it's paired up with is more reactive than the hydrogen, then hydrogen is produced, and we labelled this up last time. If the other ion present is less reactive, then then that metal is produced instead, often plated around the cathode. In the case of electrolysis of sodium chloride, sodium is more reactive than hydrogen, so hydrogen was produced and we saw that bubbling off uh, and being collected at the top there. So that's the rule for cations, positive ions. The rule for anions uh, is different. So here in the sodium chloride aqueous, we've got uh, chloride ions, that's an anion, and the hydroxide ion, that's an anion. Now, if you start, if the ion contains only one atom, then that is produced. Now the ones that contain only one atom are all halogens. I often get my groups when I teach them to look at the periodic table. Here is the periodic table, here is the halogen group, group seven of the periodic table, group seven, that's the halogen group there. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine. If we start with one of these ions, then that is produced at the expense of the hydroxide. If we start with a different ion, a more complex ion, like sulfate, then the sulfate is not produced. In that case, the hydroxide is produced, and that makes oxygen and hydrogen. That's kind of what we did last time. It was a very brief summary, but it's essential uh, if we're going to do these other ones. So the next one in the specification is the electrolysis of copper 2 chloride aqueous. So to work out what's produced, the first thing we have to do is write down what ions are present. So copper, and we can see from the Roman numeral there, it's 2 plus, Cu2 plus. The chloride, Cl minus. Uh, aqueous now. Aqueous means water, so we've got hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Right, let's identify the positive ions and use the reactivity series to work out what's produced. We've got copper, Cu2 plus, and hydrogen H plus. Back to the reactivity series here. Uh, here is copper, low down the reactivity series, lower than hydrogen. The rule is the lower down the reactivity series, that's produced. Well, copper's lower than hydrogen, so we're going to see the copper being produced. So the copper 2 plus is going to make our first product, which is going to be copper solid, copper metal. The copper ion makes copper metal. Now, uh, the anions, Cl minus and OH minus. Back over here again. Cl minus uh, is a halogen. If we start with a halogen, it must be produced. It's only one. Uh, there's only one ion there, it's, uh, so we get the chlorine molecule, Cl2. So the chlorine, the chlorine is the one that wins that one, uh, so we get Cl2 produced. Uh, what's left over? Well, these, that one's producing copper, that one's producing chlorine, therefore these two are left over. So third, third product, if you like, water. Right, we can label that diagram, I'm not going to do it now, I'm trying to keep the video a little bit shorter. Um, 
Let's have a look at what filling in these and doing the half equations. Uh, what travels towards the anode? Well, uh, the anode is the positive electrode, so it's going to be the negative ions that are going over there. Well, if we see here, the chloride negative produced chlorine. So the Cl minus ion, the chloride ion, uh, okay, is attracted towards the anode and turns into chlorine. What travels towards the cathode? Well, the, uh, the copper ion, that's going to go to the negative electrode. The positive ion is going to go to the negative electrode. Uh, and it's going to turn to copper metal. So the, the cathode, that's the negative electrode. The negative electrode, so it's going to be the copper ion, the Cu2 plus ion goes there uh, and turns into copper. Right, equations again. Uh, well, these, this, is, uh, this is a starting point of our equation, of course. So the anode positive electrode, uh, the chloride ion, the chloride ion goes to the electrode, turns into chlorine. Balance the equation, one chloride ion, two chlorine atoms in the molecule, so we're gonna need two chloride ions. These are negatively charged. This is neutrally charged. So that negative has got to be lost. If it's lost, it's a product. So the negative charge produces electrons. One chloride ion makes one electron, two chloride ions makes two electrons. Cathode, negative electrode. Uh, the Cu2 plus ion goes there and turns into, and turns into, and turns into copper. This time, uh, it's positively charged, so we need to give it negative charge to get rid of those uh, excess positives, uh, and it's going to need two electrons. We can put state symbols on these if we want to. This was uh, that's aqueous solution, and that's going to be a gas. That was in solution, aqueous, and that's going to be a solid. It's going to be plated around the electrode. Uh, oxidation and reduction, oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. I always think reduction is easier to spot. Reduction is gain. The copper ion is gaining electrons. So let's put that down straight away in the reduced box. The copper ion has to be the copper ion, not copper. Copper isn't gaining electrons. The copper ion is gaining electrons. Uh, so let's just write that in there, the copper ion. Uh, oxidation is loss. The chloride ion, that's losing electrons. Cl minus ion. The chloride ion. Note the name ending, chloride. When it's the iron, it's the ide, because it's part of the compound up until that point. Uh, when it reacts, it makes chlorine gas. That's the element, chlorine. It's the chloride iron that is uh, being oxidised. Next one on the specification is sodium sulphate. Okay, first thing to do, identify the ions present. Uh, the ions present are sodium, so that's Na+. Sulphate, the SO42- ion. Uh, it's aqueous, so we've got hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions because they make up the water, the aqueous. All right, so each of these, uh, let's try and work out what's made. Um, so we'll go back to our rules. Uh, the cations, the Na positive and the hydrogen positive. Well, here's our reactivity series here. Sodium is way above hydrogen. Uh, so the least reactive is produced, the least reactive is hydrogen, therefore down here we're going to get the hydrogen being produced. So you're going to get that one making hydrogen gas. All right, next one, we've got uh, the uh, anions, the sulphate ion and the hydroxide ion. Well, sulphate ion is a complex anion. In other words, it's made of more than one uh, element. So that is not going to be produced. Uh, the sulphate ion is going to turn into oxygen and water. Why is it going to do that? Because it's not produced. It's the hydroxide that wins. Uh, in here, we've got hydroxide ions and sulphate ions. If you start with a more complex anion, uh, or in other words, not a halogen, sulphate is not a halogen, it's sulphur and oxygen joined together, it's not a halogen, then it's the hydroxide that produced, that's produced. The hydroxide is going to win that one. It's going to make oxygen and water. Okay? So... Let's, uh, let's just finish let's put, uh, this one off now and let's do it like that. We can see, can't we? Bingo. What travels towards the anode? The anode is a positive ele electrode. Uh, positive electrode the, uh, is going to attract the negative ions, so the sulfate and the hydroxide. We said the hydroxide wins. So the OH minus ion, the hydroxide ion, is going to go there uh, and turn into... And when the hydroxide ion touches the electrode, it turns into oxygen and water. What travels towards the cathode? Cathode's a negative electrode. That's going to attract the sodium and the hydrogen. Well, the hydrogen's less reactive, so therefore that one wins. 
So the hydrogen ion is going to go there and turn uh, into just straightforward hydrogen gas. Okay. Uh, equations for the reactions of the cathode and the anode. Anode positive, cathode negative. The hydroxide turns into oxygen and water. Okay, this is a horrible, horrible half equation. The hydroxide turns into oxygen and water. First thing you do is balance it. Um, one oxygen on the left, three oxygens on the right. One hydrogen on the left, two on the right. Well, um, just to get that to balance, uh, if I put a three there, we're gonna make three hydrogens. That's never gonna go into two. So I'm going to put four there. Uh, four hydrogens, two hydrogens. If I put a two there, I've got four hydrogens. That now gives me two oxygens, plus those two makes four, four oxygens. So that's balanced. This has got negative charges. It needs to lose that negative charges because these products are neutral. The products of electrolysis are always neutral, so it needs to lose those negative charges. So negative charges are electrons. Therefore, electrons are going to be products. Four hydroxide ions is going to make four electrons. Hydrogen turns, the hydrogen ion turns into hydrogen gas. The hydrogen ion turns into hydrogen gas. One hydrogen ion, two hydrogen atoms. We need two hydrogen ions to make one hydrogen molecule, an H2 molecule. This has got positive charge, so it's going to need to gain electrons to balance that out. One hydrogen ion will gain one electron, two hydrogen ions are going to gain two electrons. In the electrolysis of sodium sulfate, what is oxidised and what is reduced? Well, oil rig, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. I always think reduction is easier to spot. Reduction here, hydrogen ion is gaining electrons. The hydrogen ion, the H plus ion, the hydrogen ion, that's what's gaining electrons, so therefore that is reduced. Uh, oxidised, hydroxide is losing electrons, oxidation is loss of electrons, the hydroxide ion is losing electrons, they're products over there, so they're being produced, they're being lost from the hydroxide ion. The OH minus ion, that is what is oxidised. That's quite quick. But that's the electrolysis of all the solutions.